Is Social Security still the third rail of American politics? Mitt Romney apparently thinks so. His campaign has issued seven press releases in only the last nine days, slamming Rick Perry for calling the program a Ponzi scheme, a line of attack that he continued in Florida today. He said, by any measure, Social Security is a failure. I disagree. I think by the measure of the tens of millions of people who rely on Social Security, it's a success. I can't see anything which suggests it makes any sense whatsoever to end Social Security as a federal entitlement and send it back to the states. Major Garrett is National Journal's congressional correspondent. Uh, Major, you, you write about uh, Social Security and the, all the politics of Social Security in the National Journal. One of the things that you point out is that the payroll tax cut that has been proposed by the president would actually undermine the long-term funding solution for Social Security. That's right. It's the great unobserved debate going on as Rick Perry and Mitt Romney talk about whether Social Security is a good thing or a bad thing. Before our very eyes, last year there was a payroll ca tax cut that took $105 billion out of the payroll tax revenue stream to fund Social Security benefits. Yes, there is enacting legislation that says that money has to be put back in through general revenue, and now there's an even bigger payroll tax cut on the table. It may or may not be considered, but as that debate goes forward, Andrew, we have to ask ourselves, if you take payroll taxes, which fund future benefits, and you lower them in order to stimulate economic growth, create jobs for whatever purpose, you are fundamentally undermining the historic means by which Social Security is financed in the first place. So there is already a solvency issue for Social Security because fewer workers are contributing for benefits to be paid out. That's one problem. You exacerbate that problem by reducing the amount of payroll tax revenue dedicated for those future benefits. That's a debate that really isn't going on here in Washington. It just strikes me as this is an unprecedented tax change, something that ought to be debated a bit more aggressively, regardless of it's a Ponzi scheme, all these other sort of uh, phrases that get bounced around. They're missing the substantive change that's going on before our very eyes. And, Major, one of the other points here is while we've been focused on what's happening on the Republican side, you're pointing out what the president's proposals would do. And the other piece is that the president really has taken Social Security off the table along with the other entitlements, unless there are tax changes that the Republicans agree to on the other side in his latest proposals. Right. And that is meant to send a signal to Democratic base voters, independents who care about Social Security. The president's there to protect Social Security. Fine. That's a rhetorical device. It has some policy behind it. He wants to protect Social Security. He doesn't want to raise the eligibility age or cut benefits. OK, fine. But when you finance Social Security through payroll taxes, dedicated pay payroll taxes, and then you propose cutting them, even temporarily, and you say, well, we're going to fill that in with general revenue, then Social Security becomes a program that has to compete for general revenue. Well, when it competes for general revenue, it becomes e like every other federal program. And Social Security would probably be the first recipient of general revenue because it's such a sensitive political topic. But that still doesn't alter the fact that you're fundamentally changing the financing for it and changing its political orientation in American life. That seems to me to be a huge change, one that's happening, but most people aren't noticing. Major Garrett is. You're noticing in the National Journal. Thanks very much for bringing it to us today.